And we get a really nice coverage in here as well. So hopefully, this is gonna keep this car as rust free as possible. At least I'm starting with a solid car. Welcome back to Little Miffa Classic and if you're new to my channel, I hope you stick around and consider subscribing. I put new videos every week on some Jaguar and Classic car related content and today's video is part 2 of how to rust proof your car. If you missed part 1, I'll put a link to up above and down below so you can check that out. But basically to summarize it, in part 1 we went through all the hollow sections of the car, so inside the sills, and inside the doors and all those other places where you can get cavity wax in and basically prevent the car from rusting from the inside out. So now that we've done all that, we're going to try and prevent it rusting from the outside in. So we're going to do the wheel arches and most importantly as well, underneath the floor, so under the car. So we're going to do this in a couple of stages. One, we're going to have a look at the car. This car has already been rust proof before, so it does have already stuff in place. So we're going to see what it looks like. Uh, if there's any of it flaking off, we'll remove all that, clean up that area. If we find any surface rust, I will treat that with a rust converter. Then I will spray it with a thin wax-based rust proofing material, basically just to seep into all the cracks and to seal that area up. And then afterwards, we're going to go through with a rubberized undercoating that will continue to stay soft and continue to protect against stone chips and rocks and other debris that gets thrown up by the wheels and tires as you're driving along. So let's first head on over to the workbench. I'll show you the products I'll use and then we'll go over to the other workshop and have a look at my daily driver 1975 XJ6 and continue rust proofing it. So here are the products I will be using. I'm not in any way saying that they are the best products or that they're the worst or anything. They're the products I like to use. Um, feel free to use you know any that you want. However, I think it's good to have some type of thin wax based one at first. You can kind of use this as a primer because this will creep into any areas, especially if you have some old under seal like I have where most of it is pretty good, but there's some areas where it's let go and of course moisture can come in underneath. And this is really good to, um, once you clean that area, to spray in there because if you missed anywhere, this will creep in underneath and it will also kill off some of the rust and it will prevent new rust from entering that area. Talking about killing old rust, so anywhere I find surface rust, I'm going to clean up the area and I'm going to use a kind of rust converter. They usually work that you brush them on, leave them for um, a few hours or maybe a day, depending on the brand. Then it will usually turn bluish or black and that will kill all the bacteria in there and basically make sure that that rust that's there is not going to continue spreading. However, this stuff is great, but um, especially around areas where you can get stone chips and stuff from the tires, this can wear away. So you want a coating on top of that, and this is just sort of traditional undercoating. However, you don't want an undercoating that gets hard, because that's the kind that, you know, gets a rock chip and it cracks and water comes underneath. You want it to stay pretty soft, and this one does. So that's basically all you want to do. You want to make sure that it has you know, something wax based and that it stays pretty soft. So then after this is dried, I will spray this in all the areas where I know there'll be some more wear, you know, spray from the tires underneath, uh, basically where I think rock chips and stuff will be. And this will be an extra protection on top of this really good rust protection. Other things you will also need, of course, is you know, a way to get the car up in the air on jack stands or a lift. You will need, um, I think it's good to have masking tape to mask areas around. Uh, wear gloves when I do this thing, so you don't want this on your hands. I also wear a respirator because you don't want to breathe this stuff in. You know, so just, you know, sort of common sense tools that you need to do a job like this. Now let's get on over and have a look at the car. I prepared a few things off camera. As you can see, the car is up in the air. I have it up safely on jack stands so I can easily get under and work on it easily get to everywhere that I want to rust proof. If you're lucky to have a lift, then that's even better. You get up higher in the air, but you can definitely do this at home with jack stands, no problem. So here is, I'll just put a light in here so we can kind of see this is the inner wheel. Well, up front, and all I've done is I've brushed away any loose debris, and then I took a vacuum cleaner and I vacuumed around anywhere, you know, getting rid of road grime, um, Sometimes gets driven on a dirt road, so you have some dirt in here. 
And that's a good thing actually to see where dirt collects. Because now that I know sort of where the dirt collects, you know where it's very important to check for rust. Because where dirt collects, you'll have moisture there and you'll probably have rust. So, at least a common place on these cars is up here for dirt to collect. There was a thick, thick cake of dirt here that I got off. And down here. So as you see, there's a little bit of surface rust down here. So my next plan is to get a scraper. We'll scrape off what's left of some old underseal here, which seems to be letting go. So we can treat that rust, hopefully stop it. Here it actually seems to have not rust at all. It's just sort of dirty. So we'll continue cleaning over there. And then I found a little bit of surface rust here where some of the underseal let go. Otherwise, the underseal in this car is in really, really good shape. So we're just sort of doing a freshen up job, but if this is a freshly restored car, something that you have where all of this is painted, there is no underseal, you can skip these first steps of how do you know, get rid of some rust and prepare the area. But if you have an old car like this where it has been undersealed before, then these steps are definitely worth doing. Now I've cleaned up the area here. I've scraped away any underseal that was loose and revealed a little bit of surface rust here. So that was good that we found that. If that was left untreated, of course it would spread and eventually rot through here. So this panel is still, it's pretty much like brand new. Just a tiny little bit of surface rust here. Also we found a little bit, see if I can get my shadow out of the way, we found a little bit up there to the left of the headlight right over there. So I've done the exact same thing there. Now cleaned everything out, vacuumed everything up first, and then blew everything out with compressed air. The reason I like to vacuum things up first is because when you blow things out with compressed air, it just goes everywhere. So I like to get most of it off with a vacuum cleaner and then the last with compressed air. Now I have my rust converter here. There are many, many different types of it. I like the ones that you don't need to wash up afterwards. There are certain types that Afterwards, they want you to wash off the solution with water. And I don't want to introduce any more water into an area which I've spent you now a couple of weeks getting perfectly dry. So this one I really like. It's a Swedish brand, but let me show you what it is actually. It's called um, Hogmans. I'm not sure if you can get outside Sweden, but try and get one where you don't need to wash up afterwards. At least I think those work really well. So I'm gonna get some hair on a brush. And all I'm doing is just brushing it into the area here. They all work a little differently, but usually they end up turning black when they're I finish reacting with the uh, uh, with the rust, basically. So what this does, it, it chemically um, alters the state of the rust, so that it no longer actually is rust and becomes nice, healthy metal. Uh, so just read instructions on whichever rust converter you choose to use. On this one, you need to let it sit for at least three hours, but you need to paint something over it within 48 hours. So I will apply it here, as well as over there. And then I'm gonna do look over the rest of the car, apply it in any area it needs to be. And we'll come back when this is dry in uh, maybe the next tomorrow, so in like 12 hours or something. And then we'll see what this looks like. It's the next day and the rust converter has done its job. It's turned all that surface rust into healthy metal again. So got rid of all the rust bacteria basically. So once it's turned black like this, you know that it's, the reaction is done and it's ready to be painted again. So it's different with different rust converters. Um, this one you don't need to do anything with afterwards. You can just leave it in place and paint over it, which is exactly what I'm gonna do. But while I've been waiting for all that, I've been pretty busy with masking tape. So here is sort of where you can choose yourself. I'm using this as a daily driver in all kinds of weather. So um, I want the best protection possible. Another place where cars can often rust is right here, because the paint is very, very thin right here on the edge of a wheel arch, say. You have the wheel spinning here. And you have a spray that comes up here with gravel or anything, especially in the winter. It'll eat off the paint here and it'll start rusting here. So I have masked an area in the inner wheel arch, which I think looks pretty nice. A little hard to show on camera, but all the way down here as well. Here I've gone a little bit further. So these are just common places where you get a lot of road debris, you know, slung up by the tire, especially when it's raining out. So I want to rust treat here as well and also 
use a little bit thicker um, quote unquote stone chip protection here on the sides basically to protect from exactly that stone chips coming in chipping this metal and having the wheel or just rot out because they're in very very nice shape on this car the uh, none of the uh, paint has been worn off anywhere on it but I want to keep it that way. I've set up a different light and I've set up the camera so hopefully you guys will be able to see it really well without me getting any of the stuff on the camera because that's something I really want to avoid. If I sound a little bit funny it's because I'm wearing a respirator and if you hear some other noises the door is open so I have a lot of ventilation wearing a respirator because you don't want to inhale this stuff or at least try to avoid to. I've uh, mixed up the can for quite a bit so it should be good to go. Just as many other products you need to have a pretty warm environment between 15 and 25 degrees. So I have a thermometer in here. It's about 17 or so in here and I did heat up the workshop a little bit so it's probably a bit higher as well. So it should be good to go. I'm going to start with spraying all of the areas here that were basically bare metal that I treated. So we'll just start with those areas. Give them a light coat. So you can see this stuff really does really thin and it just wants to creep in everywhere which is really really what you want. Alright that's the first little light coat of that. I'm just going to wait a couple of minutes. I'll hit all those areas one more time. Wait a little bit more and then we'll hit everything with a thin coat of this stuff. It's been a couple of minutes. I've hit all those areas twice now, so I got good coverage there. Now I'm just gonna do a light coat everywhere. Most of this inner wheel arch is in really, really good shape. The old undercoat is stuck on really well. However, if there's a small crack or something somewhere where that I haven't found when scraping, if I hit it with a light coat of this, this will hopefully just creep in underneath and help to protect the metal in the long run. Well, that's the plan at least. So nothing special to it. Just kind of like you're normally spray painting everything, except it doesn't have to be as pretty. And for areas up here around the light, just try and get the can in there and spray up as far as you can. It doesn't matter if you get runs or anything, you just want this stuff everywhere. So now I've hit everything with at least two coats. This has to use about two to three coats, but because a lot of the area still has really, really good old under seal, I've only done a light coat on those places. But in other places where there was bare metal uh, or some cracks where we, you know, treated with the rust treatment before, I put a few, about three coats on there. So everything has been covered nicely now. I am going to continue with the rest of the car now. I've got the other arches as well. I've also set up a masking tape line here, right here. So this bottom of the sill here, you don't really see when you're walking next to the car. And that gets a lot of, uh, you know, abuse from driving. So I am going to add under seal on this part as well. Before there's only been on the floor, but I want to add it to here as well. So I will do all that now because it's exactly the same as this. We'll come back in a few hours or so where this has dried off a bit more and then we're going to hit it with the next coat. It's about two hours later and I would say that it's dried because that's the wrong word. This doesn't fully dry but it's cured so we're ready for the next coat. So everything's been sprayed up in here and I've done the whole rest of the car as well. I also decided to hit some of the front suspension areas a little bit just to um, yeah, basically make it look a little bit nicer. I know that at some point I'm probably going to have to replace all these rubbers down along the line. When I have do that, I'll probably take the whole front suspension out and then I will do a complete, you know, restoration of it and I'll paint everything up nicely. So I just have, you know, a little rust proofing on there for now just to not make it worse. There was some slight surface rust in some areas, but it wasn't really bad at all. But now at least, at least it looks a little bit nicer. So I'll set up the camera now and we'll start with the next coat, which is the undercoating, which protects against, you know, stone chips and things around here. We're going to put some here on the edge as well to not get any, hopefully any stone chip, any rust in here. It also works as a bit of a sound deadener, which is great. So there already is some, of course, here, but it will help keep, you know, the sound of the road out from inside of the car. So I'll set up the camera like before. We'll start spraying in this area over here. 
All right, once again, mask is on and gloves. Here's what I'll be using, the undercoating. So, like I mentioned before, it's just to protect this rust proofing layer here, which really is great rust proofing, but it can be sort of worn away by road dirt and debris. So, we're we using this. So, it's basically just like spray painting like before. Spraying all the areas, getting a nice even coat. And of course, it's really important to get the areas that were bare metal before that we treated with the other stuff just to get some extra protection in that area. And I've also masked off, so I'm doing all the edges here just to get a little bit of extra protection against stone chips here on the edges. All right, so there's really nothing to it. I'm just gonna say everything once more without spraying because you might not be able to hear everything I say because the spray can is pretty loud. But it's just like spray painting before, nothing special. We'll just make sure you cover all the areas. It's really important to get a good coat up where, sort of imagine the wheel spinning and where it's gonna hit everywhere or where you know dirt, dirt and road debris is gonna hit and wear this away. It's also really important to get the edge here that I masked off. Get a good nice coat on there to protect that. And that's basically it. So I'm gonna continue spraying all of this through the rest of the car and then we'll let this cure for uh, a few hours or so. We'll go away because you don't really wanna stay in here, it stinks. And then we'll come back and we'll have a look at what everything looks like. It's about an hour later and it's definitely not dry yet, but it's dry enough to remove the masking tape. I recommend removing that before it completely cures. So now you see there's a nice edge around here and don't mind the dirt here, that's just from the car being a little bit dirty when it was parked in here, but I did clean off all the areas that I did treat before, you know, first sort of washed it a few days ago in those areas and then dried it off with some solvent to get any old grease or wax away from there. So it seems like it uh, stuck on really well and I have a nice black edge all the way around. And we get a really nice coverage in here as well. So hopefully, this is going to keep this car as rust-free as possible. At least I'm starting with a solid car. So I think that is a good thing as well. So now I'm going to do the same thing on the other way. Just remove all of the masking tape. And I'm actually going to put the car back on the ground. But I don't recommend using the car right away. If you can, let it sit for probably 48 hours or so. So everything fully cures. So you may be curious what the floors and the sills look like. I chose not to film that because it's the exact same thing as the up front there. And it'd be very difficult to film under here without getting any stuff on my camera. But, like I said, I have treated the whole car, so I chose to run the masking tape line right down here. So as you notice, you are never ever really going to see that. But it is a common place where they can rot out. So here is a join between the sill and the floor. So I went a little bit further there. So basically the exact same thing to the floor. I checked the old under seal. If there was anything loose, I scraped that away. Treated any surface rust, but I found hardly nothing at all. Maybe two or three spots the size of a fingernail. It was really, really good. And yeah, then I did the exact same treatment. Do the same thing over here, of course, in the rear. Got that nice line going all the way around there as well. Put some extra back there because that's a, a normal place for things to rust out. And you may be wondering just one thing, what happens if you get a tiny bit of overspray? Like you see, I got a little, little bit over here. It's usually not a big deal. You can read on most of the containers. It will tell you how to get rid of it here. Before it's fully cured, you can definitely get rid of it with just some light solvent. And when it's cured, I think you have to take some heavier stuff like acetone or something. Or you can probably even just take a clay bar and remove this. I'm going to remove this now just with some light solvent. And for me, it's not really a big deal because, well, in a few weeks or so, I'm going to go through the whole paint on this car. I'm going to, um, you know, try and polish it up as much as I can, remove any debris from it and give it couple coats of really good wax to protect that for the winter as well. And that's it for this video. So now this car is pretty much all there when it comes to rust proof and there's still some things left to do. I do want to emphasize that this is just my way of doing it. There are many many other ways of doing it and 
you know, lots of opinions on the internet, but this is the way I do it and it's usually worked really well in the past. So there are a few other things I do want to do. I'm going to probably remove uh, some of the chrome around the light, you know, spray some wax in around there just to protect in some more extra areas. If you want a video of some specific extra things to look out for on the XJ6 or an XJ12 or just the XJ Jags in general, some specific more areas to look out for us, please let me know in the comments down below and I might make another video just going through those specific areas. Another thing I will do that also is good to help for cars that are out a lot in the weather is I'm going to polish up the paint to try and make it as nice as I can. This car doesn't have really the best paint job but I think I can make it look pretty nice with just a weekend and some simple products. And then of course the most important thing, put a nice coat of wax or a couple nice coats of wax on top of it to help protect that paint because that also does help a lot with a car that's out in the weather. So let me know in the comments down below if you'd be interested in seeing a video on that as well. Sort of a video on bringing old paint back to life sort of easily at home and getting the nicest, um, the nicest looking paint you can and most importantly get your paint protected. So let me know in the comments down below if that's something you want to see. Anyways, if you follow along on the channel, you know that I am rebuilding the engine or the cylinder head off that car. And as I'm filming this right now, right after I film this, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to continue cleaning things up. And pretty soon that head will be back on. So probably next time you see that car, it will be up and running again. And hopefully it will be running really well. So anyways, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below if you're not already subscribed. Please subscribe to the channel, it really does help out a lot. And until next time, I'm Adam, and this was Lumifa Classic. I'll see you soon.